Um, five point harness. One point, two point, three point, four point, five point. This is what you really want to save you when you're really trying to go gaming. The submarine strap is in there. Uh, you can see right here. Yeah. I'm uh, like so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. So mind you, we're not experts. So you know, if other this people, is just pre-runner guy stuff. You no. Know, take what, <laughs> take what you need and leave the rest. <laughs> All right, so we're back with harnesses. Uh, this one probably won't be as complicated as our seat information. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, but but very important. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's important. Pads are important. All that stuff's important. And Morgan's going to take us through how to mount these things, why they're there, what they do, and all that good stuff. First, we will just talk about what we're looking at, what options there are. This is a five-point harness. If you guys already know this stuff, it's fine. It's just basic information. So take what you need and leave the rest. Um, five point harness. One point, two point, three point, four point, five point. Or if you want, usually the, the standard is the four point, and then you have this, which is a submarine strap, which is your five point, which goes right by your, uh, your goods. The five point, um, you know, all, all the seats usually have provisions for where the harness um, mounts and where it comes to the seat. Obviously your shoulder pads have your, your holes here where they go through, they go to the chassis, come over, come over your shoulder. Same with the lap belts. The lap belts come from the side of the seat and go right to where your waist is and they go through their own hole here. The fifth point, which is the submarine strap, goes through here and I don't know if I can thread this. I'm gonna take this off first. The fifth point, is called the submarine strap. The reason it's called a submarine strap or that I call it that or I've heard that and uh, adopted that term is because if you just have the four points harnessed up and connected, if you stuff or you have some kind of impact where you know your your forces the force are, is pulling you down. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're gonna slide through and you're gonna submarine out. So it's just gonna dive and your whole torso is gonna to wanna to slide down the seat or slide. You know, if you stuffed at a high pitch or a high angle, your, your body's gonna to wanna to not only compress, but it's gonna to wanna to come through the bottom of the seat. It's gonna to wanna to go somewhere. So right? when, you're, yeah. when you're really trying to jam and get serious, it's highly recommended to run these. A lot of people just run this four point situation, but this is what you really want to save you when you're really trying to go gaming. Mm -hmm. So this guy will go through here. You gotta, gotta just thread the needle. There you go. So to the chassis on a tab, through bolt, and then you just kind of adjust this thing based on where the location is. And you know, there's not really like a heavy adjustment for you when you're harnessed in the car. It's really just getting it close because this doesn't need to be tight. It, it just needs to be somewhere close to where it's not gonna let you go past. Some people like if they build their there are pre-runners that are street vehicles and they do a lot of street driving. They just say, oh, screw it. I'm just going to put the lap belt on. And that's the provision they give themselves for highway use. But a lot of the time, the best way you can set your car up if you're going to be doing a lot of daily driving is just run your factory seatbelt still and just have it bolted up. And, you know, mm -hmm. you can do that on the street and build, keep that in mind when you're building the thing or setting it up and then have these guys ready. So when you set this up, you have the whole system going and you just run your normal seat belt on the street and then undo it and put these on. The other thing I want to cover is the options for harnesses. So some harnesses you'll see like if it's a maybe like a road application like a street car a lot of like the like the rally and euro style harnesses or even like JDM style harnesses it's just a, it's a thinner this is a three inch sometimes there's a two inch and it's just the strap it's not this is padded so if you you know opted for more comfort and especially for off-road like you're getting jarred around where you want to have this next to you so you're not just rubbing your neck or your body raw right there you have padding and it's also more comfortable on your shoulder bone or your shoulder and your your collar bone that's an option to consider if it's a street car situation it might just be easier to you know or if you're wearing a driving suit and you have a street car then you really aren't concerned about that and you're not doing big jarring loads you just want to be firm and and set in there yeah and then on top of that you guys you don't have to buy this specific seatbelt there's slide-in seatbelt pads that you guys can get if you already have that application yes. already 
you just undo it, throw it in there, and then you could adjust it to wherever it is and just, you know, tighten it. So you don't necessarily need the pad built into it. There is a separate type of accessory that most companies have. Yep. The other option on, on some harnesses is a sternum strap. So this is this is this goes right where your sternum is. And this is another secondary measure where this thing doesn't spread. It just stays consistent with you. So it's a, just another measure to harness yourself into the car. So the other thing we can go over, there's a couple different ways that these fasten together in, in different harness systems, but this is your real standard style harness where you have your five points that need to connect. It's very obvious if you set it up where, you know, you can see these are directional. So your driver's side and your passenger side are directional. This is your middle guy. So you just make a sandwich here. And then you get the male into things and you go through the three females there. And you hook that guy, you know, get that, come on, right there. And then the most important thing is, no matter what, you have to check. This thing might seem like it's in there, and unless you hear that, that click, you know, you always want to check for that. That. Because you'll think that that's there, and if, it, if that thing is not there, then... Before you know it, these things, you might even not know, and that thing's not engaged. And if it's not engaged, then you're, you're up shit creek. So there's this area that needs to be latched, and then also this is a secondary measure to kind of hold that, is this is Velcro. So it kind of holds it from wanting to come out. It's just a secondary measure. It's not gonna save you if something really bad happens, but just make sure that that thing clicks. So you can see here, there's different types. Like if you look on the lap belt, you have this, this clip-on style. You have a bolt-on style here for the submarine strap. And then on the rear, I always opt for the over the tube style. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the truck and show you guys how these are mounted in the truck. And we're gonna show you the order in which you go through to get yourself properly fastened and harnessed into the car. All right, here we are. Um, James's truck set up for five points right now. You have your lap belts. They're not adjusted, so mind you, like this is probably a little extra here, or that's for a, you know, someone that's juicing really hard. We'll just put these up here for now. So again, you got your sandwich, one, two, three. You'll plug that thing, and then you'll set up your clicker here. That thing's in, right? So that's what we got. You can see it, you can see the pattern. All of them are in. What you wanna do is get your waist settled first. So you wanna be able to tighten your lap section as your primary. And I'm just doing this with a Bluetooth person. And that should be ideally right at your waist, right? Where yeah, we'll get you in there and do it. But like, see, I, I made this tight right here first. Boom. That's what you want feeling like it's almost, you know, where your waist or where your fold is on your torso. And you want that your first one. You don't wanna get in and just tighten all this to like, just put it all together and click it and then start doing your shoulders. Your shoulders are the last thing you do. So once you have this adjusted, then you move to your shoulders. These are just set on here for mock-up right now. So I'll get James in here and just kind of get a baseline setting on where these need to be. And then we'll fasten them in. Whenever I hop in the car again, like Morgan had went over his check in the waist. I like to keep it right where you know my belt is. Correct me if I'm wrong everybody, internet world, but keep it down low. So mind you, we're not experts, so you know, if other this people- This is just pre-runner guy stuff. You no, know, take, <laughs> take what you need and leave the rest. Uh, what I always do, if I know I'm gonna go for a ride ride, I kinda will push my butt and my torso into the seat where it's supposed to go right. and feel, you know, like my, I'll make the best posture I can into yeah. the seat. Yeah, and so- And I'll start there. Right? Yeah, exactly. Same thing. So when I hop in, like I'll put my foot on the firewall or if there's like a, you know, some, something to push off on, kind of push my butt back to the corner of it and then kind of feel how this is. First and foremost and just, just Maybe sink that. It. And yeah. then, you know, then from there you kind of adjust this, these guys. And if, and if you're giving some ride, you gotta get that kind of going. Yeah. You know? just wanna really send that thing it's deep true. in there. The reason why is because, you know, obviously you don't have that much leverage to pull, you know, from here. So if you have somebody else to help you out, probably be better. Um, and you're ready, man. The other thing is if you can't get, like I went over to James' side right there and I couldn't really get any more pull on that because I was limited by the seat. So if it's something where you have someone smaller or it just, your packaging is limiting your, 
you know, your adjustment, then I would get him out of the seat and I would make adjustments to that lap belt and then get him back in. Right. right. To tighten it, make it optimal tight. Yeah. Because if you feel any looseness and if you're getting in the car with somebody and, you know, it feels like you, you can't get the adjustment you need, speak up right off the bat because it turns into a situation quick. So I cinched these up on here. They're not finaled, but, you know, the thing to consider here, I mean, First off, this is the way I believe shoulder harnesses should be. I don't think that they should be on a clip like your, you know, like this is a, a eyelet here with a clip style harness. I think for off-road vehicles, always going to a fixed part of the chassis, like a tube like this is optimal. Um, where this is a complete wrap around, all of this is completely tied into the chassis now. So what I did right now is this, this still needs to loop back around but it's enough to get good adjustment to figure out where the harnesses and the shoulder straps need to be on James's body. Sometimes what I've done when I get in a car is I will loosen these guys up, like I'll pull them long, just yeah. so I'm not worried about it at all. And then I'll adjust, I'll get everything together, and once it's together, I'll get the waist, and then I'll come back and I'll cinch these guys up the best I can. So the waist is pretty much good to go. There you go, you heard the click, everything's latched. Yeah, see? Yep. And then straight to this guy, and then once the waist is in, and sit up. This. Yep. Go back and reposture. And I'm pushing yeah. on the firewall. And then you have a sternum strap too. Yeah. So there's that. Now the other thing you can do is once you start going and you start getting a little more comfortable in the vehicle, then just give them a couple more tugs to get that that last reassurance of tightness. You know, you can kind of do that throughout your ride if you start feeling like things are like getting a little looser or you're getting more into that seat then just kind of readjust. I feel secure. I feel good. Like my shoulders feel great. You know, I, I definitely feel secure in this thing, man. Like, you know, if I'm going over, I feel planted. I pushed back as far as I could kind of on the firewall, squeaking myself back, pulled down on the shoulders. You know, I feel like I'm ready to go, man. I mean, obviously every car is different and every chassis is a little different, but you can at least aim to get these things in a in a fashion where they're gonna be the safest for you. All right, so James is still in here, same deal. Shoulders are on, waist is on. The things I wanted to go over is like, I'm using the eyelet style for the waist, and I think that's okay. Just the angles, if you look at that, like you, you can see where his torso bends, and you wanna just kinda send your harnesses in that same direction. Same with the shoulders, like the, this tube that goes across for the harness bar is here. So it's got a gradual slope up that can get someone, but you never want to have it high where the harnesses are going down on him because then there's that space, there's that void there. So you always want to be kind of capturing the person and holding them down. The submarine strap is in there. Uh, you can see it right here. Yeah. I'm uh, so <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> But there's, you know, there's only one place that's gonna fit through the seat and it's gonna drop out down there and you just wanna have it tabbed appropriately. I've seen some people in the past make the mistake of like mounting these uh, shoulder harnesses like too low or to the floor, right? Do you have anything yeah. to say about that or? I don't, I don't feel like I'm a full expert on the perfect situation and setup for harnesses. I just know just thinking about it mechanically and mm -hmm. holding a body into a seat that's going to have extreme load on it that you would want to just get below your shoulders right mm -hmm. to an extent and you definitely don't want it to be above mm -hmm. because then that's not creating that pull on you in the compression if you had these harnesses and then they just looped and went straight down that's probably not optimal but i think that you could get away with running these like if you had an extra cab truck you could still run these harnesses back to your back tube Mm -hmm. you know yeah, where yeah. there's a safe direction you just mm -hmm. don't want to go straight down of to the floor not. right yeah right. hey guys well thank you guys so much for checking out this episode hopefully this helped you guys understand some of the options with seat belts how to mount them where to go how to um, strap yourself in and different ways to um, you know secure your body your passengers and basically keep everybody safe yep and on that note this is general information i mean there's a lot of people that have been racing and doing things longer than James or I, just take what you need and leave with the rest. Do your research on stuff and, you know, get all the information you can. You know, every, everything that I 
get into, I try to get as much information as I can on something. It's the same thing you should do with harnesses and your safety. We are going to do one more small bit on limit straps and just kind of give you guys the real rough rundown. Of, Life, right? Yeah, and just, just their point and give you an example on James's truck of what they look like and kind of how to use them. We got some more stuff coming your way with some accessories and different types of things that you guys need for your truck, such as limit straps, tie downs, ways to secure items inside the vehicle, easier access ways to get inside the vehicle, all that kind of stuff. So if you guys have any other suggestions of other things that we need to go over or other things that you guys would like some information on, please uh, comment and let us know. Give us some ideas. Again, we take all your comments seriously and that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for checking out this episode. Um, see you guys later. Oh, my God.